Welcome to our first Sunday of the new year. We also welcome you to a new worship series called Finding Our Way, Finding Our Way. Today, part one is called Take Me Back, Take Me Back. Eagle Irie Baptist Retreat Center, located on Lock Mountain in Lynchburg, Virginia, is where I met the Lord. Seriously, if you don't remember anything else from this sermon, Google this place. Honestly, if God was habitating anywhere, you would find God here in these mountains. It's about 400 acres of the most beautiful territory. And for two winters, I went with other high school students to a retreat. The youth in our church were huddled together and bussed off to this location to learn more about Jesus. When we arrived, we met up with lots more teens that had been sent from other Baptist churches in the region as well. And for a few days, we had all kinds of services and workshops geared toward Christian youth. And towards the end, there was this dynamic Saturday evening service. And at the end of this dynamic speaker was an altar call. To be sure, the altar call were for those who wanted to give their life to Jesus and make it official. I was absorbing every word the speaker spoke. And at the end, I felt a strong pull to rise up and go. But I also was a teenager and it really wasn't cool. And all of my comrades that were there had totally missed the message and were engrossed in conversations that had everything to do with other people they had met since we had been up there. So do I sit still and keep my cool or do I make my way up to the altar? But I felt that magnetic pull. So, I finally got up and went up where there were already lots of kids that had broken free as well. And I invited Jesus into my life at 14 years old, my decision. This was the official beginning of my walk with God. And then I walked out of that retreat center, out of the conference room where we were gathered and piercing through the mountains was the sun on its way down. And I knew that God was peeking in on me. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. God was in the beginning. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. What was your beginning like? How did you get here? When did you first feel the presence of God in your life? When did you feel the pull to walk on this spiritual journey? When did you decide to be a follower of Christ? What circumstance had to happen for you to move in this direction? What was your beginning? Sometimes we drift away from our beginnings. When I was a pre-adolescent, I lived on an island and so I got to go to the beach a lot. And one day I was at the beach and this particular beach, you could walk out and the water was very shallow. But as I was in the ocean, I drifted and I drifted until I reached a reef. And I got up on the reef and I played out there all day with other kids. At some point, I grew tired and decided to come back to shore. And when I stepped off, I went under. I went under and I took in water. What I later learned is that from my drifting and staying out on the, wa- out on the reef, that the water had risen. And so what had seemed shallow at first was now over my head. I remember the shock to my body. I remember how scared I was. But that experience reminds me of how easy it is for us to drift and how easy it is for us to sometimes feel like we're going under. This lady was talking about a trip. Her and her husband went down south to see her people. And when she came back, people had asked 
her and her husband, how did the trip go? And she said, well, it went okay. You know, all the way down was good. But on the way back, well, you know, I thought maybe my husband had taken a wrong turn, but he said he had it. He had it all under control. And then about another half hour rolled by and it just didn't feel right. And I asked him if everything was okay. And he said, again, you know, I think I got this. Well, by the time he was willing to admit he didn't have it and that we were lost, we were two hours out of the way of where we had originally been. This story reminds me again of how we can drift and how sometimes it's hard to ask for help and how sometimes we can <laughs> go so far in the wrong direction that it takes a long time for us to find our way back. Sometimes in life we lose our way. Sometimes we get distracted. Sometimes a series of events leave us depleted. Sometimes we get angry with God. And before you know it, we are lost. Our authors say, when you lose your way, one of Arthur I read said, when you lose your way, go back to where you last remembered who you were and begin there. Go back. Maybe in the last year you've lost your way. Maybe it's been a season. Maybe it's been more than the last year. Maybe it's been years. Maybe you've been traveling the wrong way for a while. Maybe your heart is just contaminated with worry and you can't get free from it. Maybe you allowed yourself to plummet into despair. Maybe loneliness has tackled you to the ground. Maybe this life, this hand you were dealt, has made you bitter. Maybe the heaviness of loss after loss after loss has just weighed you down. Maybe you were in a relationship and you lost yourself. Maybe just traveling life, you got lost. Maybe you can't even see your way out. You don't even know where you are and you don't know how to ask for help. Maybe you're lost and you don't have the passion, you don't have the fervor, you don't have the joy that you once had. Maybe you've drifted. A couple goes to counseling because their marriage is in shambles. You know, that's when you go to counseling. You know, counseling when there's a little something wrong, but you go when it's really in shambles. And so they're there with a therapist and they argue. And the air is thick with tension. No matter how many different angles the therapist tries to kind of get in and help this couple to begin to engage and hear one another, it all turns into argument and them shooting one another down. And then the therapist stumbles upon a question that peels back the layers. How did you all meet? The energy in the room changes as they begin to talk about how they were introduced through friends. They begin to talk about each other with tender words. A sparkle begins to ignite. A laugh escapes one of them and we are transported back to their beginning. Clearly, now in the office, it is clear that they have drifted and they have forgotten their beginnings. Remembering our beginnings helped to anchor us. The songwriter Andre Crouch wrote these powerful words, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first receive you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believe in the beginning. In this song, Andre talks about how sometimes we drift and we end up so far from God. Sometimes it's hard to find our way. It happens to the best of us. And maybe, maybe it's happened to you. I like to go on cruises. I know that that's not some folks' groove, and some people are like, I don't know. got a lot of complaints about it. Cruising is not for everyone, but hey, I like it. And rarely am I there when we pull into port, because usually it's early in the morning, and I'm still sleeping and trying to get myself together. But when we were approaching Cuba, I was awake, and it seemed like forever. But we were pulling into a small port, a difficult port to pull in. And so it took some 
maneuvering. And so I was up on deck watching as we came in, as eventually the island became bigger and bigger. And I watch as they pull in. And when we had kind of finally shifted our boat into this port, they took an anchor and dropped it into the water. And in addition, they took these super thick rope-like nooses and they dropped them around short pillars. I tell you, this was some job. That ship wasn't going anywhere. And they do all of this before they let any of us off, before it is safe to go. These tactics, this anchoring, this stopping and putting the ropes around these pillars, it secures the ship and it keeps the ship from drifting. I'm sure a lot goes into keeping us from drifting and anchoring us as followers of Christ. And one of those things is remembering our beginnings. Remembering who we are and whose we are. And always remembering our proximity to Christ. And being anchored in that. And the word became fleshed and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of God's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. In the beginning, I received the grace from a God who came down. And maybe that's your testimony too. In the beginning, I was overwhelmed by God's love and grace towards me. In the beginning, I was giddy about this new relationship with Christ. In the beginning, you took me out of to the most beautiful mountains I have ever seen and you made your presence known to me. And so whatever the minister was spouting, the tug of God's spirit on my life was so powerful that I find myself at Eagle Irie Retreat Center walking towards the altar. I don't share that story much. I haven't shared it in a long, long time. And yet it anchors me. It pulls me in. It keeps me from drifting. Take us back, Lord. Take us back to the areas of our journey where you were most powerful and present in our lives. Take us back to when we first believed. Take us back to when we jumped in with both feet. Take us back to the beginning. Take us back to those introductions. Take us back to when we began this journey with you. Take us back. A lot of leaders are saying that we should kiss and say goodbye to 2020 so that we can get on with 2021. But I encourage you to ask God to take you back so that you can remember just how far God has brought you, not just in 2020, but your life. Take us back, dear Lord, to when and where it all began this rocky, adventurous ride with you. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, it is a new year, but it is not the beginning of our journey with you. Take us back to those spaces that anchor us, that make us ready for this new year. Take us back. Dear Lord, sometimes the church can be so saddled with all kinds of problems, sustainability and challenges and issues that we drift. Lord, let it not be so for us this year. May we find our way back to you. May we find our passion and our fervor and our excitement. Maybe it won't be like in the beginning. Maybe it'll be even better. Take us back, Lord. In Jesus' name, 
Amen.